Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. It's nice to see you in this fourth and final video on site investigation. Before I proceed with the new topics in this fourth video, let me summarize what I had discussed or what I had explained in the third video. In the third video, I did explain the processes of performing deep soil drilling, standard penetration test, obtaining standard penetration number, and borehole locks, drawing the soil profile diagram based on the information in the borehole locks. In this fourth video, I will be talking about additional methods to obtain subsurface information. Those uh, methods include vein shear test or VST, cone penetration test or CPT, pressure meter test, PMT, rock sampling, groundwater table, as well as SI report. Vein shear test. Principally, vein shear test is performed in cohesive soil in order to obtain the undrained shear strength of the soil. A vein is inserted into the soil and rotated until the soil fails. Let's take a look at this diagram. So this is the vein with the diameter of capital D and the height of capital H. So when this vein is inserted into the ground and rotated, it will cause a formation of smooth cylindrical failure surface. The rotation of this vein is resisted by shear stress on the failure surface. Based on the assumptions and diagram, an equation is formulated in order to obtain or to determine the undrained shear strength of the soil. So the equation is expressed as capital T equals to pi multiplied by tau sub V multiplied by, in the bracket here, D squared multiplied by H divided by 2 plus D cubed divided by 6. This capital T here represents the maximum torque that cause shear failure to the soil. And this torque can be, can be determined during the test. Similarly, the diameter and the height of the vein can also be measured. So by rearranging this equation, tau sub V or the undrained shear strength can be determined. Take note that this test can only valid be performed in soft cohesive soil. It cannot be performed in granular material like sand or gravel due to the interlocking between the large soil particles. In soft cohesive soil like uh, clay or silt, the soil particles are fine or very small. So smooth cylindrical failure surface can be formed. This slide shows examples of shear veins. So these two pictures here show an electric vein. So this is the vein, can be uh, connected to extendable rod and inserted into the ground. And this is device or motor to rotate the vein to cause shear failure to the soil. Uh, this picture shows a vein which is uh, manually operated. These two handles are used to rotate the vein here to cause shear failure to the soil. Whereas here is the gauge from which we can estimate the uh, applied torque that cause shear failure to the soil. And the picture in the middle here shows uh, pocket uh, shear veins, very small in size. So these are different, si different sizes of uh, veins can be connected to the spring. So when this, uh, this uh, assemblage of uh, shear vein and the spring is pushed into the soft soil, and this knob is rotated, then we can read from the case here to indicate the uh, shear strength of the soil. Another method that can be employed is what we call cone penetration test, CPT, or some people call it as Dutch cone. Principally, a cone like this is pushed 
into the ground at a rate of 10 to 20 millimeter per second. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the schematic diagram of a cone here. There are two types of a cone. One is electric cone, another one is mechanical cone. The electric cone normally is equipped with electronic sensors. Basically, there's a sensor or load cell to measure tip resistance when it's pushed. So this uh, load cell will measure the tip resistance. And here, another electronic sensors to measure the friction between the uh, shaft of this probe with the surrounding soil with more complicated uh, or sophisticated uh, cone. The cones may be equipped with a uh, inclinometer uh, uh, device to measure the pore pressure and so on. Basically, there are two types of data that can be uh, collected in order to estimate the soil properties. So those data are tip resistance as well as slip resistance. To, op, uh, to perform this uh, CPT, no bore hole is required. It just pushed into the ground right, without bore holes. And the data are collected continuously, unlike in uh, soil boring. Standard penetration tests need to be performed at certain depths or at selected depths. But for CPT, the data are collected continuously. Okay, this slide shows pictures of a uh, cone penetrometer, right? different design, but uh, with similar function approximately. This is a one uh, example of a uh, cone penetrometer here. These are the uh, extend extendable rod, each rod measuring about one meter. And this uh, cone penetrometer is connected to this data logger via this yellow cable. So this data logger will record all the information depending upon the uh, sensors available in this cone. Principally, there are two types of data that to, need to be collected, which are tip resistant and slip resistance. Uh, this is the rig used to push the cone into the ground. This is the hydraulic jack that used to push. Since this rig is small, normally it's anchored, into, uh, it's anchored to the ground so that this rig will not be afflicted during the uh, process of pushing this cone into the ground. This is another type of uh, cone penetrometer. And this is the, uh, the rig. This is a more sophisticated rig. The computers and other accessories maybe is housed in this uh, compartment, uh, equipped with a crawler. So this uh, unit maybe uh, is heavy enough to to be used to push the cone into the ground. Okay, normally uh, the data are displayed in terms of graph something like uh, this. Okay. As I mentioned previously, there are two types of uh, basic data to be collected. One is here is slip uh, resistance. The unit is kPa or kilonewton uh, per meter squared. So the data are collected continuously. Similarly, for the tip resistance, the data are collected or recorded continuously. So take note here, the unit is in terms of megapascal MPA. And at the right hand graph here, it shows what we call friction ratio. It is the ratio of sleeve resistance to tip resistance. Okay, this is the equation to determine the friction ratio F sub R equals to Q sub S divided by Q sub C multiplied by 100%. So the friction ratio is expressed in terms of percent. This is a chart that can be used to estimate the soil type. So this chart I took from Bowles 1988. So on the y, oh, sorry, on the x-axis uh, it represent the friction ratio, and on the y-axis represent the tip resistance. So by knowing the tip resistance, 
and the friction ratio. So we'll be able to determine the soil type. In addition to that, this method or the CPT can be used to estimate the undrained shear strength of cohesive soil where the equation here S sub U undrained shear strength is expressed as Q sub C that is the tip resistance at that particular depth or at depth of interest minus P sub naught. P sub naught here is the effective stress at that particular depth divided by N sub K, that is the cone factor normally between 15 to 20. Okay, by using this equation, the undrained shear strength of the soil can be estimated. This is another chart that you can refer to in order to estimate the soil type. This chart I took from uh, Robertson and Campanella, 1983. So it's uh, more detailed here, but uh, the principles are similar. We have a friction ratio on the x-axis and the tip resistance, or in this case, it's called cone bearing or Q sub C, same thing. By knowing the tip resistance and friction ratio, we'll be able to identify the soil type. Uh, this slide shows a pictures of a mechanical cone, and this is a, what we call handheld mechanical uh, handheld cone. Uh, can be pushed into the ground using hand and uh, it may be pushed into a depth up to three meters. Okay, pressure meter test. To perform this test, borehole is required. This picture shows the equipment used to perform this pressure meter test. This is the probe. This is the, the control unit. There's a compartment here to store liquid or normally oil. And these are the handles. When the hand, these handles are rotated, the liquid, normally oil, will be pumped through this tube into this probe and this probe will expand. So the probe here consists of a rubber membrane protected by uh, strips of thin metal. So the purpose of uh, having the strips of a thin metal is to protect the membrane from being punctured by uh, sharp objects in the borehole, such as uh, sharp rocks or sharp vegetation, uh, vegetative residues. Okay, let's take a look at this schematic diagram. Okay, let's say this is the borehole. Okay. This is the probe. So it is important to make sure that the probe here is uh, positioned below the steel casing if steel casings are employed to support the borehole. Okay? It just is to, is to make sure that the probe will be in contact with soil, not with casing. Okay? This probe can be connected to extendable rod and this probe is uh, connected to this uh, control unit. This is the tube. So from the control unit, uh, liquid of oil will be pumped into this probe and this probe will expand. Okay? The expansion of uh, this uh, probe will cause deformation to the surrounding soil. So the, basically the process here is uh, oil is pumped into this probe and this probe will expand until it touches the borehole wall or the soil then the pressure being applied and the volume being pumped into this probe are recorded. Then pressure is being applied and additional volume of oil will be pumped into this probe, which cause the probe to expand further and cause deformation to the surrounding soil. So at that particular moment, the pressure and the volume being pumped into the probe should be recorded based on the initial reading of pressure and volume as well as the final reading of pressure and volume of oil being pumped by using certain correlations certain parameters certain soil parameters can be estimated such as k sub naught here to represent uh, the coefficient of lateral stress at rest, if you remember what you uh, learned in uh, retaining wall topics, right? 
that is the coefficient of lateral stress address. And then here we have uh, unrin shear strength of cohesive soil like clay. And here is the internal friction angle of cohesionless material like sand. But take note here from research when uh, unrin shear strength is, at, is, is estimated based on this method, it will give about 30 to 50 percent higher value than the value of unrin shear strength obtained by triaxial test in laboratory. Rock sampling. By definition, a material is categorized as rock when SPTN number N greater than 100. But in practice, normally drillers will stop driving these split spoon sampler whenever SPTN number reaches 50. If they continue to drive the split spoon sampler after SPTN has reached 50, it's going to damage the drive shoe. It is useful if you have the knowledge of the geological condition of the proposed area. By knowing the geological condition, you may be able to differentiate or detect the, whether it's a rock strata or it's just a suspended boulder. In addition to that, by having the uh, knowledge on the geological condition, you will be able to correlate between the rock type and the probable quality of the rock. So these are pictures showing what we call yeah, core bits in order to obtain the uh, rock sample. So depending upon the requirement, you may choose uh, the size of the uh, rock grill or this uh, core bit. It may range from 25 mm to 150 mm. Uh, this picture shows uh, rock samples uh, kept in a wooden box here. Right? Uh, with regard to this uh, rock sampling, recovery ratio, if you remember what I mentioned about this recovery ratio in the third video, recovery ratio is defined as the ratio of length of sample obtained divided by the length of sampler advance. If the value of recovery ratio in this case near one, then the rock can be categorized as good quality rock. However, if the recovery ratio is less than 0 0.5, then the uh, sample or the rock can be considered as badly fissured or soft rock. Another indicator that we can obtain from this rock sampling is rock quality designation or RQD, which is expressed as summation of length of intact pieces greater than 100 mm divided by the length of core advance. So after obtaining the uh, rock samples, it is essential to measure each uh, piece of the rock sample. So for the rock sample with a length of 100 mm and greater, it should be uh, total up in order to get the summation of length of intact pieces greater than 100 mm. So by uh, calculating the RQD, you may refer to this table. So this table I obtained from DAS 2013. By knowing the RQD, so we may determine the rock quality. Let's move to groundwater table. It is important to locate the groundwater table because groundwater table may affect the strength of soil. It also will affect the design of foundation and construction. In addition to that, foundation below groundwater table may be uplifted by, so, uh, by water pressure. Okay, this diagram shows the cross section to show the location of groundwater table. Let's say this is the ground surface descending and end up in a river or lake here. So this is the uh, groundwater table. So above the groundwater table, there is categorized as unsaturated zone, meaning 
not all the not all voids in the soil are filled with water some of the voids are filled with water some of the voids are filled with air some of the voids are filled with air and water that is what we call unsaturated zone whereas the zone below the groundwater table all the voids are filled with water that's what it's called as saturated zone okay this is a picture uh, which shows a device to measure the location of uh, groundwater table this is what we call a deep meter this is a normal uh, measuring tip connected to a device here which is what we call deep meter whenever it touches water it will beep okay so in a borehole if this device is lowered and when whenever it touch water it will beep and we can read from the measuring tape here the elevation of the groundwater table with respect to the ground surface let's take a look at this diagram let's say the groundwater table at a proposed project area is uh, relatively high or near to the ground surface but let's say in this case uh, excavation need to be performed in order to construct basement okay assuming this is the ground surface excavated uh, excavation need to be performed but groundwater table is high so what uh, we or they can do or you can do is to lower the ground water table by lower, by lowering the ground water table excavation can be performed so first install or drill this uh, well point and then start pumping the water out by pumping the water out so the water level will be lowered this is the what we call drawdown curve okay because water being pumped so the water will be lowered so when the water level is being lowered excavation can be performed further by lowering the water table excavation can be continued to the uh, determine of to the predetermined depth or to the required depth this is how uh, dewatering or lowering of groundwater table is performed to facilitate excavation of soil here but take note dewatering or pumping water out will cause consolidation to the surrounding soil you have to be careful because consolidation will cause settlement to the existing structures settlement to the existing structures may cause damage to the structures so you have to be careful whenever dewatering is to be undertaken finally si report okay there are certain elements that uh, need to be included in the si report scope of investigation okay you have to refer to the contract you may uh, it may include uh, performing a number of macintosh probing for example or performing a number of uh, soil drilling or cone penetration test as well as laboratory testing on the uh, soil and rock samples those are the scope of investigation that need to be included in the uh, si report and then is a general description of the proposed structure in the report you have to uh, describe briefly uh, for example the type and function of the structure to be constructed maybe it's a school a shopping malls offices bridges and so forth see geological condition of the site depending upon the size of the project area as well as the geological condition of the proposed project site you may uh, write a few paragraphs or a few pages if the project area is small and the geological condition is uh, simple then you may write, uh, maybe two or three paragraphs are sufficient uh, to explain the geological condition 
but if the project area is relatively large with complex uh, geological condition, maybe you have to write a few paragraphs and maybe up to a few pages to describe the geological condition. Drainage facilities at the site. This is important for you to go to the site to observe the existence of drainage facilities. It may include uh, rivers, it may include uh, earth drains, it may include uh, concrete line drains, and so forth. So the existence of uh, these uh, drainage facilities are important, especially when, uh, when, whenever you are required to do this uh, dewatering maybe. So you need to do these drainage facilities to drain the water out. Or maybe the drainage facilities uh, will help to uh, prevent flooding during the construction or after the uh, construction or in other words during the operational phase. Details of borings, in, uh, you have to refer to the borehole log so you can get the information uh, such as the type of boring machine uh, such, uh, like rotary wash boring, okay, the type of the machine, uh, the brand of the machine, the size of the casing being used and so on. Description of subsoil condition as determined from soil and rock samples collected. So this is the importance of drawing the soil profile. By drawing the soil profile based on the uh, borehole logs, you will be able to describe the subsoil conditions. Without drawing the soil profile, it's quite difficult to describe. Groundwater table as observed from boreholes by using the deep meter, as I mentioned previously, we'll be able to locate the uh, groundwater table. But in this case, is uh, water level in the boreholes. Keep in mind that the water level in boreholes may be different from the uh, water level in the surrounding area. Okay. Take note that if uh, rotary wash boring was performed to uh, drill or to, to create the boreholes, then most probably the uh, water level in the boreholes is much higher than this uh, water, water level in the surrounding area. Okay, depending upon the soil type of the area, if the soil, area, uh, if the soil within the project area has a high permeability, then uh, the water level in the borehole may stabilize and becomes equal to the surrounding area within a short period. However, if this uh, soil in the project area has relatively low permeability, then it may take time for the water level in the borehole to stabilize and become e equal to the uh, water level in the surrounding area. However, in this case, you have to report the water level in the boreholes. Foundation recommendation and alternative. Based on your experience, based on your observation, you may recommend, but you don't have to uh, include the detailed design of the foundation because uh, the design of the foundation is not your job. Now we are talking about the SI report. You just recommend, okay? just recommend, such as, okay, uh, for this structure should, uh, can be supported by shallow foundation and this type of structure need pile foundation and so forth. Just a general statement. Okay. Any anticipated construction problems? So by, uh, by observing the surrounding area, by visiting the proposed project site, uh, you may anticipate the cons uh, construction problem. If the uh, project area is within a busy area in busy town, so you may have, have problem with uh, bringing your equipment or bringing your construction material to the site. <clears throat> so it may cause uh, traffic congestion or maybe uh, or what we call the uh, traffic obstruction. In addition to that, if your project area is uh, within a residential area, maybe it will call, uh, it cause uh, dust or it will cause noise, which may cause nuisance to the residents. Those are the anticipated construction problems. Or if your project area is uh, in a 
remote area, maybe you have difficulty to transport your uh, machine as well as your construction material. So you have to mention that in the report. Limitation of the investigation. After performing the site investigation, you, uh, we or uh, you may be able to uh, identify certain limitation of the investigation. For example, if you remember uh, in the third video, when we talk about the uh, drawing of soil profile, you have to bore holes and the soil condition are quite erratic, then it's quite difficult to uh, determine the soil condition uh, in between the two bore holes. Right? Or maybe uh, certain laboratory testing are not sufficient uh, to, to obtain the soil parameters in order to uh, prepare a uh, foundation design. Those are the uh, examples of limitation of investigation. Addition, uh, other elements in SI reports. Uh, you may include the uh, site location map. So you have to include the global, uh, the map globally, and then you have to focus to your specific project area, such as like in this diagram. So this is your project area. So first, you have to show the, uh, the, the map globally, okay? And then you focus to your project area here. So your project area is surrounded by different uh, lots of land here, which may belong to different organizations or belong to other parties. So you ref, uh, focus to this, uh, your project area. And then location of boring and or other tests with respect to the proposed structure. Let's say this is your project area and these are your proposed structure and these are your boreholes. So you have to show the location of the boreholes with respect to the proposed structure. It's insufficient if you just mention there are four boreholes in the project area without showing the location. Okay? So the, uh, by showing the location of borehole with respect to the uh, proposed structure, it will, uh, it will help the designer right, to design the foundation or to draw the soil profile and so forth. Soil profile, based on the boreholes, you can draw the soil profiles and you have to include in your report. So to draw the soil profile, you may refer to uh, video number three. Borehole locks, okay, you have, again, you have to refer to borehole three. That's, those are the uh, samples of borehole locks, so you have to include in the report. Okay, normally in the, uh, uh, normally in this SI report, all borehole locks are included because uh, those information are important for designers. Laboratory test results, again, you have to include in the report. The result could be uh, could be in terms of graph or tables. Right? The test may include a safe analysis, uh, atomic limits, strength test, consolidation test, and other tests which are appropriate and relevant to the proposed project. Before I end this uh, knowledge uh, sharing session, let me summarize uh, what I had discussed in the uh, videos under the topic of site investigation. So uh, I would anticipate that everybody will be able to define what SI is, the objectives of SI, the major steps to perform SI, and then methods to perform subsurface exploration. Uh, it could be to obtain uh, preliminary information or detailed information. And then you should be able to uh, should be able to to identify the uses of the data from the subsurface exploration. And lastly, I would anticipate that you will be able to prepare SI report. Or you should be able to check SI report. Okay. Until we meet again in other videos with different topics in geotechnical engineering. Thank you.